Hello and welcome to Wisdom Trek. This is Guthrie Chamberlain and I'm your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for our seven day a week, seven minutes of wisdom podcast. This is day 198 of our trek. And for this week, we will stay in camp digging up nuggets of wisdom as we continue our exploration in the book of Proverbs chapter 6. Yesterday we explored verses 6 through 11 and today we'll explore verses 12 through 19. If you do miss any of the days of the Wisdom Trek episodes, please go to wisdom-trek.com to listen to them and to read our daily journal. We are recording our podcast from our studios at Home 2 in Charlotte, North Carolina. It was nice to be able to attend church services on Sunday with our local gathering of Christ followers here in Charlotte. Since we were in Marietta for the last several weeks, it has been about a month since we were in Charlotte on a Sunday. On Sunday evening, Paul and I went on our annual shopping trip to Ollie's Discount Store to pick up a few items for the grandkids for Christmas. They have one evening a year prior to Christmas where all the toys are 25% off and everything else is 15% off. So Paul and I have set this time aside for several years now. Both of us are rather frugal by nature and this is an enjoyable time together, especially knowing that the prices are extra low. We also got a call from our renovation contractor on Friday about the work that's going on at the big house and we were glad to hear they're making real good progress. With us being out of the house and the fact that we did prepare the two front rooms, the foyer and the downstairs hallway, They were able to get most of the drywall on the ceilings, start some patchwork on the cracks on the wall, and fix a pocket door that had a broken track. We are excited to return on Christmas Eve to see the progress that they'll make by then. But for today, let's get started as we remain in camp sitting around a nice warm fire. Visualize with me the smoke that wisps gently into the air and the flames that leap from the logs that are burning so brightly. Now I find staring into the campfire almost mesmerizing. It gives me a chance to sort of get lost in my thoughts. But in the same way, if we're not careful of who we associate with, we can become mesmerized by their philosophies. As we explore Proverbs chapter 6 verses 12 through 19, this chapter in the book of Proverbs is referred to as Lessons for Daily Life. And today I'll read the passage in two segments and then we will dive deeper into our exploration of each segment. Starting at verse 12, what are worthless and wicked people like? They are constant liars, signaling deceit with a wink of their eyes, a nudge of their foot, and a wiggle of their fingers. Their perverted hearts plot evil, and they constantly stir up trouble. But they will be destroyed suddenly, broken in an instant, beyond all hope of healing. We realize that sometimes an evil person is easy to identify, but at other times we must be very careful. There are many people who have perfected the practice of lying to the point where it is even difficult for that person to realize they're lying. But Jesus was very stern when he described such a person. And this is in John chapter 8, verse 44. Jesus was confronting a group of people that did not believe that he was the Son of God. And this is what Jesus said. For you are the children of your father the devil, and you love to do the evil things that he does. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he's always hated the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. The basic nature of evil people in Proverbs 6 verses 12 through 15 is that they are liars. And liars just can't be trusted. They are dangerous to associate with because their evil plans are secret. These people's signals are small, but these signals will help us to identify them. Jesus in Matthew chapter 7 verses 15 through 20 tells us to be careful when we are around them, so that we do not become influenced by them. And this is what Jesus said. Beware of the false prophets who are disguised as harmless sheep but are really vicious wolves. You can identify them by their fruit, that is, by the way they act. Can you pick grapes from a thorn bush or figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit, and a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. So based on this passage, if we see a poisonous tree, then we know the fruit is poisonous. And if we see a good tree, such as an apple tree, then we know that the fruit is good. Let's continue to consider the actions of the people described in Proverbs 6 verses 12 through 15. In verse 12, he speaks false words. He's a liar. Such behavior is not good. It warns us about their true character. And in verse 14, they plan and they plot evil. Evil does not just happen. It always begins in the mind, but is revealed in actions. This type of person's behavior is evil. We should not trust them. We have to be very careful that we do not become like these people. Because God is just, and His justice cannot be mocked, as told to us in Galatians 6, verse 7 and 8. Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Those who live to satisfy their own sinful nature 
will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. But let's continue on our conversation and dig for nuggets of wisdom found in verses 16 through 19. And it's a bit of a poem and it goes like this. There are six things that the Lord hates, no seven that he detests. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that kill the innocent, a heart that plots evil, feet that race to do wrong, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who sows discord in a family. We see in verses 16 through 19, it's a different style of poetry. The poet writes a list of things that God opposes. We also find this style in Proverbs chapter 30 and the book of Amos. The numbers in these lists are not really important. It is written in this way for emphasis. However, the subject matters are very important. Here the poet tells us that God hates these evil actions. Verse 17, it talks about the haughty or the proud eyes. The poet is describing someone who is proud. He mentions eyes because that's how we see people, with our eyes. How we see or think about others always shows up in our eyes. Proverbs 27:19 says, A face is reflected in water, so a heart reflects the real person. The evil person thinks that he is greater than other people. Perhaps he even thinks he is greater than God. God opposes proud people. God does desire for us to be humble. Once again, we see this person as a liar. And when you lie and have hatred in your hearts for others, it's a short step to murder. In verse 18, it talks about a heart that plots evil. Remember in scripture, the mind and the heart mean the same thing. God knows our thoughts. He knows our secret plans. In verse 19, it talks about a false witness. And once again, this person is pointed out to be a liar. This is his very nature. It is also not wise to be a person who is constantly planting seeds of strife, especially within families. Contrast this verse with Psalms 133 verse 1. How wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. In this verse, brothers does not mean family members. It's extended beyond that to neighbors and friends. It can even mean nations. Peace is good. It is God's gift. Sometimes because we live in a fallen world, war might be necessary. If, for example, atrocities are being committed in the same way that the Nazi treated the Jews in World War II. However, even in war, we must look after people and try to work for peace. And we should always pray for peace. As we remained in camp today, we dug up some more wisdom nuggets. As we consider them, let's not be the type of person described here, and let's not spend a lot of time with that type of person. As we consider these wisdom nuggets, choose to associate with like-minded people that will encourage you and help you to grow. In the same way, encourage your family and friends to join us, and then come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. And we will continue to dig for nuggets of wisdom from Proverbs chapter 6, verses 20 through 29. That will finish our podcast for today. Remember to listen to your daily dose of wisdom at wisdom-track.com or subscribe at iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, Stitcher, or any of the other social media platforms. And please share Wisdom Trek with your family and friends on email, Facebook, Twitter, or in person and invite them to come along with us each day. The journal for today's trek can be found at wisdom-track.com. Thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, your friend, as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal each day. As we take this trek together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. This is Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.